April 8th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Joshua chapters 10 through 12 of the Old Testament. Adonai Zedek, king of Jerusalem, heard how Joshua captured A and annihilated it and its king as he did Jericho and its king. He also heard how the people of Gibeon made peace with Israel and lived among them. All Jerusalem was terrified because Gibeon was a large city like one of the royal cities. It was larger than A, and all its men were warriors. So King Adonai Zedek of Jerusalem sent this message to King Hoham of Hebron, King Piram of Jarmuth, King Japhia of Lachish, and King Debir of Eglon. Come to my aid so we can attack Gibeon for it has made peace with Joshua and the Israelites. So the five Amorite kings, the kings of Jerusalem, Hebron, Jarmuth, Lachish, and Eglon, and all their troops gathered together and advanced. They deployed their troops and fought against Gibeon. The men of Gibeon sent this message to Joshua at the camp in Gilgal. Do not abandon your subjects. Rescue us. Help us. For all the Amorite kings living in the hill country are attacking us. So Joshua and his whole army, including the bravest warriors, marched up from Gilgal. The Lord told Joshua, Don't be afraid of them, for I am handing them over to you. Not one of them can resist you. Joshua attacked them by surprise after marching all night from Gilgal. The Lord routed them before Israel. Israel thoroughly defeated them at Gibeon. They chased them up the road to the pass of Beth Haran and struck them down all the way to Azekah and Makeda. As they fled from Israel on the slope leading down from Beth Haran, the Lord threw down on them large hailstones from the sky all the way to Azekah. They died, in fact, more died from the hailstones than the Israelites killed with the sword. The day the Lord delivered the Amorites over to the Israelites, Joshua prayed to the Lord before Israel. O sun, stand still over Gibeon. O moon, over the valley of Ajalon. The sun stood still and the moon stood motionless while the nation took vengeance on its enemies. The event is recorded in the scroll of the upright one. The sun stood motionless in the middle of the sky and did not set for about a full day. There has not been a day like it before or since. The Lord obeyed a man, for the Lord fought for Israel. Then Joshua and all Israel returned to the camp at Gilgal. The five Amorite kings ran away and hid in the cave at Makeda. Joshua was told, The five kings have been found hiding in the cave at Makeda. Joshua said, Roll large stones over the mouth of the cave and post guards in front of it. But don't you delay. Chase your enemies and catch them. Don't allow them to retreat to their cities, for the Lord your God is handing them over to you. Joshua and the Israelites almost totally wiped them out, but some survivors did escape to the fortified cities. Then the whole army safely returned to Joshua at the camp in Makeda. No one dared threaten the Israelites. Joshua said, Open the cave's mouth and bring the five kings out of the cave to me. They did as ordered. They brought the five kings out of the cave to him, the kings of Jerusalem, Hebron, Jarmuth, Lachish, and Eglon. When they brought the kings out to Joshua, he summoned all the men of Israel and said to the commanders of the troops who accompanied him, Come here and put your feet on the necks of these kings. So they came up and put their feet on their necks. Then Joshua said to them, Don't be afraid and don't panic. Be strong and brave, for the Lord will do the same thing to all your enemies you fight. Then Joshua executed them and hung them on five trees. They were left hanging on the trees until evening. At sunset, Joshua ordered his men to take them down from the trees. They threw them into the cave where they had hidden and piled large stones over the mouth of the cave. They remain to this very day. That day Joshua captured Makeda and put the sword to it and its king. He annihilated everyone who lived in it. He left no survivors. He did to its king what he had done to the king of Jericho. 
Joshua and all Israel marched from Makeda to Libna and fought against it. The Lord handed it and its king over to Israel, and Israel put the sword to all who lived there. They left no survivors. They did to its king what they had done to the king of Jericho. Joshua and all Israel marched from Libna to Lachish. He deployed his troops and fought against it. The Lord handed Lachish over to Israel and they captured it on the second day. They put the sword to all who lived there just as they had done to Libna. Then King Horam of Gezer came up to help Lachish. But Joshua struck down him and his army until no survivors remained. Joshua and all Israel marched from Lachish to Eglon. They deployed troops and fought against it. That day they captured it and put the sword to all who lived there. That day they annihilated it just as they had done to Lachish. Joshua and all Israel marched up from Eglon to Hebron and fought against it. They captured it and put the sword to its king, all its surrounding cities and all who lived in it. They left no survivors. As they had done at Eglon, they annihilated it and all who lived there. Joshua and all Israel turned to Deber and fought against it. They captured it, its king, and all its surrounding cities and put the sword to them. They annihilated everyone who lived there. They left no survivors. They did to Deber and its king what they had done to Libna and its king and to Hebron. Joshua defeated the whole land, including the hill country, the Negev, the lowlands, the slopes, and all their kings. He left no survivors. He annihilated everything that breathed, just as the Lord God of Israel had commanded. Joshua conquered the area between Kadesh Barnea and Gaza and the whole region of Goshen, all the way to Gibeon. Joshua captured in one campaign all these kings and their lands, for the Lord God of Israel fought for Israel. Then Joshua and all Israel returned to the camp at Gilgal. When King Jabin of Hazor heard the news, he organized a coalition including King Jobab of Maiden, the king of Shimron, the king of Akshaph, and the northern kings who ruled in the hill country, the Arabah south of Kinnereth, the lowlands, and the heights of Dor to the west. Canaanites came from the east and west. Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, and Jebusites from the hill country, and Hivites from below Hermon in the area of Mizpah. These kings came out with their armies. They were as numerous as the sand on the seashore and had a large number of horses and chariots. All these kings gathered and joined forces at the waters of Miram to fight Israel. The Lord told Joshua, don't be afraid of them, for about this time tomorrow I will cause all of them to lie dead before Israel. You must hamstring their horses and burn their chariots. Joshua and his whole army caught them by surprise at the waters of Miram and attacked them. The Lord handed them over to Israel and they struck them down and chased them all the way to greater Sidon, Misrephoth Maim, and the Mizpah Valley to the east. They struck them down until no survivors remained. Joshua did to them as the Lord had commanded him. He hamstrung their horses and burned their chariots. At that time, Joshua turned, captured Hazor, and struck down its king with the sword. For Hazor was at that time the leader of all these kingdoms. They annihilated everyone who lived there with the sword. No one who breathed remained and burned Hazor. Joshua captured all these royal cities and all their kings and annihilated them with the sword as Moses, the Lord's servant, had commanded. But Israel did not burn any of the cities located on mounds, except for Hazor. It was the only one Joshua burned. The Israelites plundered all the goods of these cities and the cattle, but they totally destroyed all the people and allowed no one who breathed to live. Moses, the Lord's servant, passed on the Lord's commands to Joshua, and Joshua did as he was told. He did not ignore any of the commands the Lord had given Moses. Joshua conquered the whole land, including the hill country, all the Negev, all the land of Goshen, the lowlands, the Arabah, the hill country of Israel and its lowlands, from Mount Halak on up to Seir, as far as Baal Gad in the Lebanon Valley below Mount Hermon. He captured all their kings and executed them. 
Joshua campaigned against these kings for quite some time. No city made peace with the Israelites, except the Hivites living in Gibeon. They had to conquer all of them. For the Lord determined to make them obstinate so they would attack Israel. He wanted Israel to annihilate them without mercy, as he had instructed Moses. At that time, Joshua attacked and eliminated the Anakites from the hill country, from Hebron, Deber, Anab, and all the hill country of Judah and Israel. Joshua annihilated them and their cities. No Anakites were left in Israelite territory, though some remained in Gaza, Gath, and Ashdod. Joshua conquered the whole land just as the Lord had promised Moses, and he assigned Israel their tribal portions. Then the land was free of war. Now these are the kings of the land whom the Israelites defeated and drove from their land on the east side of the Jordan, from the Arnon Valley to Mount Hermon, including all the eastern Arabah. King Sion of the Amorites, who lived in Heshbon and ruled from Aurora on the edge of the Arnon Valley, including the city in the middle of the valley and half of Gilead, all the way to the Jabbok Valley, bordering Ammonite territory. His kingdom included the eastern Arabah from the Sea of Kinnereth to the Sea of the Arabah, the Salt Sea, including the route to Beth Jesamoth and the area southward below the slopes of Pisgah. The territory of King Og of Bashan, one of the few remaining Rephaites, who lived in Ashtaroth and Edrei, and ruled over Mount Hermon, Selka, all of Bashan to the border of the Jeshurites, and the Maacathites, and half of Gilead, as far as the border of King Sihon of Heshbon. Moses, the Lord's servant, and the Israelites defeated them, and Moses, the Lord's servant, assigned their land to Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. These are the kings of the land whom Joshua and the Israelites defeated on the west side of the Jordan, from Baal Gad in the Lebanon Valley to Mount Halak on up to Seir. Joshua assigned this territory to the Israelite tribes, including the hill country, the lowlands, the Arabah, the slopes, the wilderness, and the Negev, the land of the Hittites, Amorites, Canaanites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. The king of Jericho, 1. The king of A, located near Bethel, 1. The king of Jerusalem, 1. The king of Hebron, 1. The king of Jarmuth, 1. The king of Lachish, 1. The king of Eglon, 1. The king of Gezer, 1. The king of Deber, 1. The king of Geder, 1. The king of Hormah, 1. The king of Arad, 1. The king of Libna, 1. The king of Adullam, 1. The king of Makeda, 1. The king of Bethel, 1. The king of Tapua, 1. The king of Hefer, 1. The king of Aphek, 1. The king of Lasharon, 1. The king of Maiden, 1. The king of Hazor, 1. The king of Shimron Miron, 1. The king of Akshaf, 1. The king of Taanak, 1. The king of Megiddo, 1. The king of Kadesh, 1. The king of Jokneam near Carmel, 1. The king of Dor near Naphath Dor, 1. The king of Goyim near Gilgal, 1. The king of Tirzah, 1. A total of 31 kings. God, such awesome history, such incredible power by your people, by your nation, as they not only move into the promised land, but take over the promised land, removing everyone who isn't glorifying you, worshiping you. I love the little hidden gem tucked all the way back in chapter 10, verse 8, that said, The Lord told Joshua, Don't be afraid of them, for I am handing them over to you. Not one of them can resist you. And you actually say this a lot to Joshua and other people. I'm going to do this. 
But what I think we fail to realize is then Joshua had to go do his part. <laughs> Sometimes we pray to you for things and we think we have the answer of, yeah, I'm totally going to do that for you. And then we slack off on our part. Uh, we're not obedient in whatever it is that we're supposed to be doing. Uh, God, you did say you were going to hand these people over, but I certainly don't see Joshua relaxing in the slightest. In fact, to take over all of these different uh, kingdoms probably took him, they're figuring, seven, eight years to annihilate all of these different different areas, all of these different people, all of these different warriors. Um, he worked really, really hard. So just because you want what is best for us and will continue to work your will into our life, we still need to work and we need to work hard. And God, I will tell you, sometimes that's hard. I just got a text from a friend. He wants to take me out to dinner tonight. I can't. Recording for a daily video Bible comes first in first and foremost in my life. And, and sometimes, sometimes we just want to choose to be so-called normal people. Um, I don't mean that to be rude or come out that way, but sometimes we just want to choose to have the normal life that we see all of our friends having. But then you remind me so well that I am, I am not called to be normal. I'm not called to be of this world. I am actually called to be your child, your chosen child. I am a daughter of royalty and different things are expected of me. So even though sometimes we might feel overwhelmed by what you call us to do, such as go into battle for seven, eight years, and be obedient that whole entire time. I can't even imagine how exhausted Joshua must have been. And be obedient that entire time. We know just like Joshua must have done over and over again, we can go back to you for strength. We can go back to you for helping us get back on track to what we need um, to follow your will in those situations. So God, even though sometimes it's tempting to want to just veg out in front of the TV or go to the movies with friends, um, or even, gosh, I don't need to read my Bible today. I can get to it tomorrow. Please help us be diligent in what you've called us to do. We are called to a completely different level of obedience. We are your royal children, God. Please help us remember that. In your son's name we pray. Amen.